Hello, I'm a tuba judge. God bless you for today tuning into this broadcast. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you. Thank you for your spirit that is at work in us. We give you praise, Lord. Hali kaboso pradika shat Every body right now is being removed. And every yoke, everything that is ailing your life right now. Every confusion in your mind right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I command it to cease. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command it to cease. Thank you, Jesus. Someone you're so uncomfortable because of your gum. Your gum aches terribly. I speak healing to you right now. Healing to that gum. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed. And let that pain stop right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I speak healing right now. If you're sick in your body, just place your hand on that spot where, where you're hurting. And, and the Spirit of God will bring healing to you right now. Father, I thank you. Oh, let them be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, I see back pain. Back pain is being healed. You can stand up, bend over. The pain is gone. Feeling pain behind, you know, on, along your spine. That, uh, that, uh, that's been a terrible pain. Now you can stand up. Yeah, stand up right now. Stand up and bend forward bend backward the healing is taking place right now be healed in jesus name amen now i'm seeing you see several people are getting healed but we have to teach praise god so so listen we i just prayed for you now so you can go ahead and begin to do what you couldn't do before and as you're listening to the word listen things are going on in your life things are changing Thank you, Holy Spirit. I see a family situation changing. There's been so much depression in your family and it has to do with irresponsibility of your husband and lack of finances. Yeah, that's what I hear the Lord say. I hear the Lord say, hold on, things are about to change for you. Things are about to change for you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we receive this now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, we are in 1 John chapter 4. Remember, I told you yesterday, from tomorrow, which is Wednesday, we will be fasting and praying for seven days. I don't want you to miss it. We're going to be praying for our nation and bringing forth or, or welcoming and thanking God for the new season for our nation oh you know when i think of it there's an excitement that comes to my spirit well we'll talk about that praise god now first john chapter 4 i was talking to you sharing something with you yesterday from from this verse 1 it says believe not every spirit beloved do not believe every spirit but test the spirits whether they are of God. Why? Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now you see, false prophets carry negative spirits. See, just like I was telling you. Now, also, you need to understand this. Even a good prophet, you know, that's what I was telling you yesterday, in an holy moment, the devil can still speak. Don't be deceived to think that he doesn't have access. That's why I was sharing that experience, you know, I had yesterday with you. So, you know, I, I, I knew immediately that that was not the voice of the Lord. I knew that was the devil. So I rebuked him and I, I continued fellowshipping with the Lord. Now, the moment I rebuked him, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. He said, now, I, I'm telling you what I heard. Now you understand what Jesus faced when the devil told him, jump from this pinnacle. Eh, for he has given his angel. I said, yes. Whoa. 
praise God. So don't, don't think Satan stood over there. I was telling him, come, let me take you somewhere. No. It was a spirit that was ministering to Jesus. And he knew how to answer that spirit immediately. Now that's what you learn to do. Now that's why you need to understand the voice of God. Because if you don't know, now there are, there's someone who may have heard that. And just a man in this holy moment, Lord, you want me to jump? I'm going to jump, man. Holy Spirit, hold me. And then he will jump there and let's not even think about what happens. You see? Because that's, that's tempting God. Praise God. All right. So now, so be careful. Be careful. Now you look at that statement. Let me use myself as an example. Now you look at that statement. Do you know if you jump down now, nothing will happen to you? It, it sounds true. I mean, I mean, spiritually, see, it sounds true by faith. It sounds true by the anointing of God's spirit. Has he given his angels charge concerning us? Yes, he has. But you see, the spirit that is speaking is not of God. And this is how people are trapped many times. Now, when, when you meet a false prophet, I want you to follow me now. When you meet a false prophet, it's not their prophecies that is the problem. Sometimes they may be accurate in their prophecies. It depends on whatever they see, on how they go about, how they do their ministry, or how they do what they do. You know, sometimes you hear uh, people use diabolic means and all that. Well, it's not about the prophecy. And that, this, is, this is where many people have gone astray. Ah, that man, his, his prophecy was very accurate. Yes, that's not where you are trapped. Where you are trapped is when you begin to respond to the spirit that is communicating through them. How? I'll tell you how. You meet a false prophet and he gives you all the prophecies, accurate prophecies, tell you your house address, tell you what you ate that morning, tell you what you ate five days ago, tell you the discussion you had with your spouse or whoever. You say, wow, wow, wow. Now all those things are to get your attention. Now I'm talking about false prophet now. I'm not talking about that. Of course, God does those things. So don't think anybody that's doing that is false. But then, after all that prophecy, he, you now go say, oh, man of God, I need to see you. I need to see you. You go see him. And then he gives you counsel. Now there are people like that, that they can't, they can't even breathe until a prophet tells them how to breathe. Because their lives are so trapped like that. You see? So now it is in the giving of counsel that you are trapped. Now that's when the spirit begins to minister to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now you hear such prophecies and then you begin to operate in fear. Now so he tells us the test, test, test. Now how do you test? Look at what he said in verse 2. By this you know the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So there is a way to know if it's the Spirit of God that's involved. All right. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Now, you look at the scripture. Is this saying, you know, you, you, you want to just tie this down to, you know, a, a service and then, a prophetic service for example somebody is prophesying and then you want to hear before he starts his prophecy jesus is coming in the flesh jesus is coming in the flesh and i said oh this this is the spirit of god no he didn't say every spirit that says jesus is coming in the flesh no he says every spirit that confesses what is the word confession confession is acknowledging um agreeing see so he's not just saying you say Jesus is coming in the flesh. No, if your communication agrees that Jesus is coming in the flesh, if you're, if you're acknowledging that Jesus is coming in the flesh, he said it's of God. So how do I know that? I'll tell you. When, when someone is prophesying and he, he, he begins to tell you, ah, this prayer you cannot pray to. You cannot pray it. Now you just know immediately that that spirit is not confessing that Jesus came in the flesh. Are you getting what I'm saying? Say, uh, how? Yeah. You know, sometimes you, you say you cannot pray this prayer. 
ah, this prayer, you need, you need me to help you pray this prayer. Now, do we need help? Yes, we need help. But you see, it's the Spirit of God does not confess that you are helpless. I wish you would understand this. And then they begin to say, except you do this or this or that or that. And then they begin to give you assignments and they begin to give you all sort of things. Now, now sometimes, you see, people, are, you need to know the difference. Now, there are false prophets. There are uneducated prophets. Now, when I mean uneducated prophets, I'm not talking about a prophet who did not go to school. I'm talking about a prophet who's not educated in the things of the Spirit. That's, that's the education I'm talking about. See, because there are times when you're educated in the things of the Spirit, there are times, you see, your disposition or your conclusion will be surely different from the one who's not educated. Because the one who's educated, the benefit of education is you see farther, you see more. You see. Praise God. So the one who's not educated can tell you things based on his ignorance and where he's been. The one who's educated will tell you based on what he knows and what he's seen. So two of them may see the same thing. See. But you see, their counsel will be different. Now, but then... Now that's the, there's the there's the false prophet, then there's the uneducated prophet. So he doesn't necessarily have to be false, but most times his counsel or his decisions may be wrong. Are you getting what I'm saying? With all the sincerity in his heart, he may still be wrong. Because that's what he knows. Now this that's what I was telling you earlier. This is how you are trapped. The counsel they give to you, the assignments they give to you. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? That's where you are trapped. The moment they begin to make you do the work that Jesus has already done, you know that this is not the Spirit of God speaking. For example, the Bible said the yoke shall be destroyed by the anointing. Because of the anointing, the yoke shall be destroyed. So someone now is now prophesying to you and say, Ah, this problem I'm seeing. You need to fast for 21 days before the problem would go. Now, you know automatically that is a lie. It's a lie. You know, someone came to me and said, Oh, Pastor, I met this prophet and he was telling me that there, there was a veil covering my, my face. That's why I've not been able to marry. So, yeah, and then I said, So what did you do? He said, eh, He said, I should fast and pray. I said, Look at you, you're a fool. If a prophet tells you that there's a veil, why don't you grab his leg to remove the veil that he is seeing? The proof that he has removed the veil is in three days' time, someone will propose to you. <laughs> you see, so, so why telling me there's a veil? And then, so you are seeing a veil. And then, next thing I tell me, I should go and fast and pray. I go and fast and pray. Uh, obviously, the person is not, not serious about what he's saying. I, I, I get what I'm saying. So, now, the moment they begin to tell you to do what Jesus has already done for you, something is wrong. Now, am I saying, we don't need to fast and pray. Listen, we fast and pray to seek the mind and the wisdom of God. The reason we take long time to fast and pray, I'll tell you, is not because that problem requires that long fasting and praying before it is solved. No. But I may, I may stay that long to understand the wisdom of God on how to change that situation. So it's about me. It's not about the problem. It's not about God. So do you understand what I'm saying? Now, because of where I am, because of where my mind is now, I may need a long fast to break down certain theories or certain understanding in my mind. Now, that's why when we fast and pray, we don't just go around doing every other thing. We spend time with the Word. Because a renewal must take place. Then we begin to see properly. And then we begin to proclaim what we see. And after that fasting and praying, you don't go back to the way you used to be before. There must be a change in you. So most times, what needs to change first is you, not the problem. The moment you change, you realize the problem was nothing. So I'm not saying this to say, don't fast and pray. Praise God. Our time is up already. Wow. Many things to share with you. Mm. And we're just in verse 2. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.